Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a graded card scam and this has existed forever. Now one of my other hobbies is collecting autographs. I used to be a big fan of Tiger but now Tiger autographs are just not worth that much because he's not very good. But I also liked MJ, all the classics, Kobe. Uh, there was a time that Kobe autographs were relatively easy to get, still kind of expensive, but easy to get. And what happened is they were, autographs are forged a ton. And not just autographs, but the patches. So in the sport industry, you are either looking for an autograph or a patch, like a unique patch that looks very good, maybe of the logo. The most important card would be called the Logo Man in basketball and that has a very high price tag on it. So when you talk about grading, a lot of these third-party graders are actually not legit, and they cannot detect if a card is fake or not. They just kind of assume, hey, all right, we're going to grade it, we're going to charge a $20 fee, and then we'll send the card out, and now people think the card is real. You cannot trust graded cards. Like, that's just fact. Uh, there's many times they made mistakes either on the name or if it's a counterfeit. So today we're looking at a dual land and you can clearly see, you see that little Rosetta pattern on the left? That's the real card. That's a real deal. And if you see uh, on the right, there's no Rosetta pattern. So this was an auction for a dual land volcanic island, which came out to be only $256. Pretty good deal. Uh, use Gem Mint 88. The grading industry makes so much money and I don't think it actually adds to the hobby. I know a lot of you and especially collectors are going to disagree with me, but when you have a card that's $50 just because it got a grade does not, in my opinion, make it $300. Yes, it's in the, the cost of the card is dependent on what someone's willing to pay for it, but grading has always seemed very silly to me because I grew up playing with cards and sleeves I can't imagine someone who actually grew up playing beta in, in elementary school, in middle school, and high school thinking that graded cards are a good concept. Because back then, we didn't have sleeves. We didn't have, we had Ziploc bags that we put our deck in unsleeved. That's how we played. And that's how I still want to play with these cards. Uh, it's unfortunate the card prices have gone up to the point that I have to do, I have to use like substitute cards. But at the same time, Kitchen table means no sleeves, in my opinion. So that's just my opinion. I know it's going to offend some people, but it is quite possible for a graded card to be on eBay, to sell for it generally. I mean, this is not like the cheapest card I've seen. This is kind of in the price range. It is a little low. And from a graded company that is just trash. And I'm going to talk to you about why there's so many of these companies. And these companies actually probably came about from the sports industry, not necessarily from magic cards. They were not going to grade magic cards. They were grading sports cards and then along came the opportunity to make more money. So you have this, it's called SGC. I've seen a lot of just really terrible memorabilia that is obviously faked and obviously um, not correct. Uh, one of these scams that people do a lot is they take a patch card that's just a patch that looks very good and then they take a patch autograph card and then they cut the two to make a new card with a real autograph and a real patch card but that's not the num so if you look at the number that's not actually the original card and it'll go for a lot more because the combination of a patch and an autograph goes for far more than either a patch and so it's about how unique the card is. The more unique you can make the card, the better it is. And that's why you have people grading fake cards. This is some of real problem. I know there's a person in Houston and he grades fake cards. He just goes ham. If you are a collector and you don't know this game and you don't own a real card that you know is real, then it's very difficult for you to discern visually they look, counterfeits look perfect. They look very close to perfection right now. Gen 6 is 
nine out of ten, nine and a half out of ten in terms of look. Now, normally what people do is they touch the card and it feels off. The smell is a little off. Uh, it feels kind of still more plasticky, and it feels sometimes it's more flimsy most times, and sometimes it's heavier. But on the surface, on the surface, you have to understand that a graded fake card is very realistic looking. It's even better than having it double sleeved because there's more, I guess, sleeves now, if you will. That's the future of counterfeits. The future of counterfeits is to get them all graded by a third party that doesn't really care and then sell them on eBay. This is exactly what the guy did. He took a card that was cost him five cents to print in China or at Canada, and he got a grading company for $15 to grade it because they don't know better. And he may have got multiple sets graded, and now he was able to sell it for $256. He's done this many, many times. People are always looking to make money from counterfeits. Like that's initially that was my concern. I didn't really care about the play groups and oh, you want to play in store and not feel embarrassed that you don't have like a thousand dollars to buy a, a land, a play set of lands. I get that. That makes sense to me. But the majority of I would say eighty percent of people who I've talked to about this issue, they're in it to make money, and. It got a little harder as more people knew about counterfeit. Counterfeits have always is, existed, but as more people knew about counterfeits, and they were sold on Puka Trade and other places like that, or traded on Puka Trade, and no one really cared, a, a lot more of it got into the market. So you're kind of you don't know if the person with the counterfeit knows it's a counterfeit, and you don't know if they've been scammed previously. So. At the core issue, in my opinion, is this is the next level scam. You have counterfeits. You send them to this fake card grading agency, Sports Cards Guarantee LLC, and they, they grade it. They put it in this uh, plastic, which makes it more difficult now to realize it's fake because, again, visually, they look very good. The problem is the texture. The problem is the card thickness the problem is that it smells like plastic and has this kind of weird uh, smell to it and you know why it seems kind of realistic it seems kind of realistic because it got an 88 right this is a near mint card and they must have damaged it a tiny bit and then got an 88 so when a average collector or non-magic player or someone who does not own another revised land, maybe this is their first one, they don't have a comparison. They just have a card in a slab that they can't take out, that they cannot do the bend test, they cannot do the water test, they can't do any of these tests on because they're not going to take it out. And now they have a bunch of them. So I know for a fact that this card is fake and the person who sent it probably sent a whole batch of them and now they're selling them from place to place. I think it's kind of sad. In my opinion, that's what you get. Maybe this company is really, really good at uh, verifying sports. I've never come across them, but they are good at like determining autographs and determining um, patches and game used material but they suck at magic because probably no one does it and they're just trying to make an extra buck and that's what you see with a lot of these companies when they get into magic grading is they don't actually have people who play magic they're just sports people and those sports people are generally they just want to get rid of it it's like a job right it's like working at mcdonald's there's an order I want to finish the order. What's the easiest way for me to finish the order? It's for me not to say it's fake, but to just deliver on it if it's close. And these cards just, they look very good. Uh, and it looked good to the point that even a company, a large company like this one, whose entire, who's one of their departments and makes a lot of money from grading and verifying cards, not only, like, how can you grade a fake card, right? I mean, uh, clearly they believe the card was real, could not detect it was real. This is the next generation of magic cards, uh, counterfeits.
it's so good that unless you have the real copy by your side, there's no way for you to tell in a graded card. This is gonna be one of the biggest scams coming in 2018. I already know it, you know it, because you probably already see stuff like this. You're like, what company is this? I don't know. It's easy to sell, it's easy to move, and the profitability from five cents to 15, let's call it $20. The probability of making $256 on this from 20, that's a huge margin you're not going to see anywhere else, even in the sports cards. Sports cards, I mean, the autographs are generally can be faked, but it's getting harder and harder to do because there's stickers and you know, those stickers are going to come. You can take stickers out of other cards, but there's, you know, when you take the sticker out, it says do not place on or something. They're getting very good with the technology because as collectors and in the sports market, there's just so many fakes out there. I, I, there's so many clever fakes, but one of the things that has always existed is someone taking a fake card, going to a third party, getting it graded, and now suddenly it's real. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.